QWERTY keyboards, which, if you didn't know, get their name from this row of keys in the top left, have been a core part of our computing experience for well over a century. How exactly the QWERTY layout came to be is actually a matter of some debate. Some say it was the inventor of the typewriter laying out keys so the mechanisms wouldn't stick. Others say telegraph operators developed the layout to put easily confused letters near each other. Whatever the reason, QWERTY was how we all learned how to type, and typing was how we learned to use computers. But QWERTY keyboards are becoming a problem. Phones and tablets made big keyboards impractical, and VR headsets, smartwatches, and smart home gadgets make them impossible. We can't interact with these things with a mouse and keyboard, especially the big, roomy ones we've all loved for so long. There are plenty of companies working on new ways to input, and they all have different ideas. Some claim to be faster, others claim to be easier, and some claim to work where a keyboard just can't. We're going to try a few of them and see if anything might be able to get me to quit QWERTY. First up, Tap Systems, a company building a wearable keyboard. Instead of using your fingers to type on something, your fingers themselves become the keys. Let's Tap now. fingers started. one and two, okay. two and three, three and four, and four and five. N, T, L, S. So tapping is inputting information by touching your fingers to anything. The, the bigger challenge was to try to forget all of that and imagine a situation where you're trying to adapt something really for humans that's optimized to them with today's new technology. One of the main challenges of this was to make something that was ergonomic, that it was comfortable enough to wear for many hours, um, that would fit a lot of people's hand sizes in a way that, that worked. But the biggest pure vertical markets would be VR and AR, where again, you're not seeing what your hand is doing, and for this, you don't have to. It's completely tactile, so you can have no problem inputting data while you're in the virtual, while you're wearing a headset. I'm only like 40% sure on all of these, but I feel good about it. I feel like the hardest part of this is remembering not to put fingers down that I'm That's not true. using. That's true. It's a whole new thing, so, yeah. it's, so you've got to kind of learn what your hand is supposed to do and not do. I'm really interested in the idea that the future of typing is still about your hands, just in a deeper way than smashing your fingers onto buttons. This next company, Leap Motion, takes that idea another step further. And these are actually my hands. Their thing is, what if your devices could just see your hands moving in space and figure out what they were doing? We've always felt like the, the best use cases are where people can see their hands and have their hands touch something that is three-dimensional and have it change instantly as if it is a real object. All right, so what's going to be happening here is we've got two VR headsets, and we've got our sensor on the front that's going to track the position of your hands. It doesn't feel that bizarre to have grabbed this and not feel it in my hand. It still feels like it kind of works. Yeah. If we can create virtual representations of things and have them follow the physics of reality, then we can bring together the power of that type of learning. Reach out and, and pet mittens again. Ah! Huh. This is both fascinating and horrifying. All these things are well and good, but who says you have to use your fingers to type in the first place? Of all the ways to replace the keyboard, voice is probably the most obvious. You probably already do this with Alexa or Siri. And there's some real evidence that voice typing is already better than QWERTY. Speech has been considered a future way we'll interact with computers for almost 60 years. But if you start to think about composing a whole paragraph or writing a paper, doing that in speech starts to interfere with the part of your brain that's actually having to compose the information and think about it. And that's where speech actually won't be a great interface. Here's my other issue with voice typing. You can't just talk. You have to say, hey James, comma, how are you, question mark. Are you, all caps, excited for dinner tonight, question mark, exclamation point? It's just weird. When I went to visit Nuance, which has been working on voice text since the 90s, I found out the company is working hard to make computers better at understanding not just what we say, but what we mean. We want to be able to support those forms of interaction that are very natural and easy for humans uh, to do through language. So being able to combine the language and the pointing or uh, maybe a facial expression, you know, as a response. That's another mode of communication. And uh, as we get more sophisticated and we can fuse that information, then we can uh, make these systems more human-like. 
After trying all these out, I think the answer is gonna be lots of answers. Voice typing is definitely happening. Typing in VR without having to tap on a physical keyboard, that's happening too. There are also people working on tech that translates your brain waves into typing, and others that let you type just by rubbing the fabric on your jacket. And look, QWERTY's not going anywhere, and some gadgets will still have these big rectangles full of keys. Others won't, and the ones that don't need something even better and more natural.